In any competitive examinations, be it NEET, UG, NEET, PG, or even MBBS exams, the most important thing that you can do to ensure that your marks are increasing, that your rank is increasing, is study by your own self. Self study is an art, self study is a science, and in this video, I'll tell you exactly how I optimized my own self study routine back in class 11th, 12th when I was preparing for NEET, UG. And this is the video which is going to change your entire self study wala game, and it's going to make you really, really efficient. I'm going to be mentioning some very high yield tricks for NEET aspirants who are targeting 24 and 25. Anyways, I am Dr. Anuj Pachel. Hi, I'm an MBBS intern posted at Government Medical College, Nagpur, and soon I'll be appearing for NEET PG. So I hope this video helps you all, and I also hope that this video helps me. Anyway, so according to me, there are three main pillars of your self-study. The first one is understanding the basic concept. Second one, basics, jaise hi tumhe samajh gaye ho, it's a lot of revisions. And part three is solving a lot of questions. So these are the three main pillars which I'll be focusing on today. But along with these three pillars of self-study, one thing which we all have in common is that we go to tuition classes which take up a lot of our time. So the first thing that I want to talk about today is tuition classes and the era of tuition classes and how they impact your studies entirely. So if you have ever driven a car or if you have ever been in a car, you know that a manual transmission car has something called as a gearbox, right? In the gearbox, you might see that one se leke six tak ke gears ek reverse gears alag se diya hua hota hai. So the most easiest way to understand what a tuition class does to you is by understanding the concept of gears of a car. So each gear that you add increases your speed on the road. So let's say that I'm going at 10 km per hour on first gear. I'll be going at 30 km per hour when I'm in the third gear. Let's say that your car's speed is nothing but the marks which you're going to be scoring in the examination. And the gear which you are present at is your level of preparation. So your tuition classes are only going to get you up to gear number two and gear number three, which is the speeds of 30 or 40. It's okay, it's very slow. You're going to reach your destination eventually, but it's going to take a lot of time. So basically what I'm trying to say is that tuition classes are not going to make you go to your most highest potential. You have so much potential left inside you that you have to tap it by yourself. The gear 4, 5, 6, all of these gears have to be unlocked by you and you only. And that is where the self-study comes into play. Tuition classes are only addition to your part of the journey. They are joining a path and helping you achieve that journey. So don't make tuition class your entire life because your entire life should be dependent on you and you should have a lot of self-study incorporated into that. In my entirety of class 11th, my tuition class never even told me to read NCRT, the most important book for need, right? And I discovered NCRT when I started studying on my own. Hold up, this is just a friendly reminder to tell you that please hit the subscribe button. I'm an MBBS intern and it takes a lot of time to record everything and do everything along with my internship. So subscribing just two seconds, dropping a like, just genuinely make my day a lot better. So please consider subscribing back to the video. With that other way, let's talk about the first pillar that is the basics. Understanding the basics, understanding the core concept is what's going to make you, help you solve the questions perfectly. So whenever you're studying by your own self, the way to optimize pillar number one is to find a resource, be it a book or an application, which has good video lectures for you to understand that particular topic. Next thing is that to enhance your first read, you should always have a weekly target. When I was a class 11, 12 student, we had weekly tests in our tuition class, which meant that I had to study for the entire week for that one test. That means her rose mein kuch na kuch padta tha, wo ek test ke liye. So assign that weekly test to yourself by your own self. Solve some questions at one particular day, maybe Saturday or Sunday, every week and study for that syllabus the entire week. Without a weekly target, you won't have motivation to do the lectures, do the first reading of the book, self-study by your own. I repeat, without a target, you won't self-study. So let that weekly test of yours be the target that you want to chase in the end. And trust me, doing this every week is going to make your preparation go so well because you are going to be studying every week without fail. Next thing which you can do to optimize the first pillar that is the basics is, is to find an accountability buddy. So the best accountability buddy will be your parents, your mother, your father, or even your sister, or your brother. Now these people, what do you do is that especially every single day, you just tell them, that I have this, Papa I have this, Didi bhaiya, maine ye padha. If you don't have an accountability buddy, let this comment section be your accountability buddy. Ek comment kar do ki this is the date and I studied this, this, this today and update it throughout the year and let's see how well do you progress every day. What will happen if you have an accountability buddy is that one day you are not maybe feeling like aaj mujhe nahi padna hai. You will remind yourself ki what will I tell to my mom, what will I tell to my dad at the end of the day. I've been telling them that I've studied this, this, this every day. Aaj maine bol diya maine nahi padha ki to meri izzat kya rahe ghar pe. Simple. Along with that to strengthen this pillar, you should always solve 
solve a lot of different questions that you can find from different books. One of the books that I usually recommend is Oswald's previous year question books and this has a lot of questions that you can just solve after you have done reading the topic. But this is very important, I'll talk about this later when I come to the questions part. So now that you've understood the concept, I also hope that you have made some notes out of the concept, we enter the second pillar that is revisions. Without revisions, no matter how good you make your notes, how beautiful you make your notes or no matter what teacher teaches you in that lecture, it's going to go away because our brains are meant to forget things which we are not using repeatedly. Only and only after revising something a lot of times your connections are strong and you'll be able to recall it during the exam. So the pillar number two is revisions. Let's talk about how you can enhance your revisions. Start from day one. This is the most important thing that I tell every aspirant. I ask when I start the revision of 11th. I say when you start the revision of 11th, you start the revision of 11th. You start the revision of 11th. You start the revision of 11th. You are going to forget whatever you have studied in the first month if you start your revision by the 9th. Ninth month and sequentially as you revise things the revision times decreases first time units and measurements revise karne ko, maybe you will take like two hours next one hour next 30 minutes and probably you will end up at a phase where you have very short concise notes which will help you revise the entire topic in like 20 minutes so that's what you have to achieve over here is that start revision from day one and be consistent with it the next point be consistent with your revision without consistency it's going to fail let's say that you revise units and measurements today uh, in one week in two week and then you stopped it in next year, you will be like, Aray, I forgot this concept, how do you use this concept, all of that different things. There are three different hacks which I used to optimize my revision. The first one was making something called as a chemistry sheet. Now this chemistry sheet was an idea of one of my professors in my tuition. So what he told me was that, for let's say that this is your page. In the page, write only the RHS of the equation, leave the LHS of the equation blank. So let's say hydrogen plus oxygen, and here the arrow, here the reagent, do. just leave the product side entirely blank. Or sometimes leave the reactants blank, or product or reagent. Do. What will this help you do is that, especially in inorganic chemistry, even in organic chemistry, once you just take a glance at this, you are actively trying to recall ki what are the different products during this reactions. So especially for inorganic and organic, if you have studied, you will know that there are so many equations, there are almost like 500 equations that you have to memorize completely. And without making a sheet like this, you won't be able to do that. So make a chemistry sheet for inorganic and organic and for physical chemistry, make sure that you make a formula only sheet. There are different formulas which you have to apply to solve the different problems. Make that sheet and whenever you are revising chemistry, and sheet to revise and you see how quickly you can get done with the revision. Second hack, I used a physics formula sheet as well, the same way I made for chemistry. For example, let's say that I'm studying moment of inertia. Instead of just calculating the moment of inertia of a particular object at that point, I used to have written down almost all the moment of inertia which were present in my tuition ke module. Along with that, I also used to write down all the formulas which are present in that chapter and even some special questions which required some special formulas. I used to write that down in my physics formula sheet. So whenever, let's say, I wanted to revise that thing, rotational motion and moment of inertia, just that one single sheet of, let's say, five or seven pages that used to help me revise all of the different formulas, which are the most forgettable things in the entirety of physics. So that formula, once you have revised, that entire chapter is essentially done. And this is the way you are going to increase your revision frequency as well as decrease the revision duration. Third life hack is to make a mistake book. A mistake book, I've talked about this many times on the channel. If you didn't know this, whenever you're solving previous year question papers, for example, you are using the Oswald's previous year question paper book which has 36 years of complete neat UG question paper solved along with the latest 2023 one. You find this question, question number 17, I don't know what this is because I left it five years ago and you are not able to arrive at the answer. Okay, and this is a previous year question paper so it is very very important that you know this question. Look at this question and you write down this answer which is given so all the accurate answers of the questions are also provided. You just write this answer in your mistake book and the next time what you are going to do is next time you are going to look at this question in your mistake book and you're never going to make the same mistake you made again so mistake book is a way of ensuring that you're not repeating the mistakes over and over again this is the most important thing once you can do a mistake but over and over if you do a mistake you are the mistake that is what I like to believe so make a mistake book so let me just quickly revise what are the three essential life hacks for revision first one is obviously to make a chemistry kawala sheet second is to make a physics wala sheet and physics wala sheet huh? third is to make a mistake book so these are the three important things you should be doing as an ETUG aspirant for your revisions. The last one, a bonus tip for all of you guys, which I use personally is something which is very, very fun. Say that I've read this chapter called as morphology of flowering plants. What I used to do is that I used to ask my friend, okay, take this book of NCRT, open any page from morphology and start reading a sentence and I'll complete the sentence for you. So you should just literally open the book and just used to start, this is seen in 
and then I used to complete the sentence. So this is a fun way to revise. You can do this especially with your parent, with your sister, brother. And if you have good friends like I did, you can definitely do it with them as well. What will happen by the end of 11th and 12th? You can give them any book of NCRT, be it physics, chem or biology and ask them, open any page, open any line, I'll complete the line for you. Because that is a level of preparation that is required to crack into a good institute. Anyways, that's a whole different story. Let's move on to what we call as pillar number three, that is solving a lot of questions. Now, what questions do you actually want to solve? Need is an exam where repetition is 100% compulsory. That means whatever they've given like in the past 20, 30 years, they're going to pick some questions out of that. They're going to remodel it, reframe it and put it in the new examination. The best way to solve previous year questions is subject wise. And even in subject wise, you should be able to solve it chapter wise. Let's say morphology of flowering plants you did from biology. You should have a book which contains morphology of flowering plants. Okay? All the previous year questions are still now. The best book for that is Oswald's PYQ. I only recommend a handful of books on my channel. And one of the books is this Oswald's PYQs for the last 36 years. Open that chapter and you see, achha, achha, yahan pe sare questions. So solve all of that and not just solve, just learn them, just learn them blindly because previous year question papers are bound to be repeated. If you are not able to understand that, just blindly learn it, probably they will appear next time. But solutions are also provided, but OMR sheet is also provided so you can practice all of that using this textbook. If you want more information on how you can actually predict the paper just by solving previous year question papers, you should definitely check this video out which I made almost a year ago. My suggestion to all of you guys is that solve the previous year wali textbook at least two times. So like this is the book for chemistry, there is one for biology, there is one for physics as well. So solve this book completely two times. It will put you in a position much higher than most of the other neat aspects, much higher than 95% of your neat aspect. Now once you have done your PYQs, the most important part comes is that solve the entire mock test papers directly. So find, find a good book which contains mock papers, find some website which contain good mock papers of 720 marks of whole entire syllabus of need 11th plus 12th start giving them even if you are not good with seven or eight chapters of a particular subject it's okay Un seven eight chapters se I maximum tumare 15 questions aane wale. Uske upar nahi aage. so even if you are not done your syllabus completely 100% you can still start solving the entire syllabus wale papers which are commonly called as grand test or GTs so give your GTs Start as soon as possible, give as many GTs as possible, get accustomed to uh, writing the OMR sheet, filling the OMR sheet, time management, get accustomed to what is the pattern that you are going to be following during the paper and get accustomed to sitting down in one place for three hours and filling the OMR sheet and getting in that mental pressure so that when the neat examination comes, you are in a very calm state of mind. For example, like I was when I gave my exam because I gave almost 52 uh, question papers, full syllabus question papers in the last two, three months of NEET. So I've talked about all the three pillars. I've talked about the tuition class. So the most important part of the video comes right now is that what should be your exact routine that you should be following in order to maximize your self-study, in order to maximize your revisions, basics, PYQs, all of that. Assuming that you are a tuition going kid who is either in a drop year or either in 11th and 12th. Personally, I like to believe that people who are early risers, people who rise before 6 are going to get the most things done because they are going to have the maximum morning time which is the most productive time of your day. So if you can, wake up early before 6 preferably. After you have woken up, give the entirety of the first 1 or 2 hours to self-study. Bed job, padho, do any of these things basics karo, revision karo ya PYQ karo, it doesn't matter. Ye teen mein se kuch ek hona chahiye tumhara. Next thing, go to your tuition class probably like at 8. Come back at 1.30 or 2. Take a break. Take a break till like 3.30. 4 tak break lo. 4.30 tak le lo. Sit at 4.30. Start your self-study once again. Now what should be the proportion of these three pillars in your everyday life? Understanding the basics is going to be one of the most important things. So, let it consume at least 50 to 60 percent of your entire time especially if you're just starting the preparation right now let it consume 50 to 60 percent of your time so let's say you start at 4 30 you can study the basics and understand the new concepts all the way up to 7 30 or 8 30 you should do the revisions which you should be spending at least one and a half hour every day doing and then almost one hour studying for your previous year question papers or solving other question papers preferably from a book like oswal pyq it's going to be almost night time have your dinner thode si mommy se baat karo. keep them as your accountability but or call call your sister or just come to this comment section and type out what you did the entire day and be accountable that I didn't waste nahi kya. Maine aaj ka din utilize kya and maine kuch progressive kya mere life mein. and then sleep with this happy thought wake up and do this once again there is a problem with this routine that routine is you're going to not have a lot of time to practice something called as life so I personally believe it's completely okay to sacrifice a few months a few moments of your life in order to achieve something great because 
इन पुराने जमाने में भी ऐसा होता था कि जो साधु महाराज होते थे इंडिया में वो बैठ के तपस्या करते थे सालों तक के सेक्रीफाइसिंग दर एंटायर लाइफ जस्ट टू अचीव दैट वन थिंग कि उनको कोई आशीर्वाद मिल जाए सो दिस इज नथिंग बट योर तपस्या दिस इज नथिंग बट योर एंटायर सेक्रीफाइस विच आर डूइंग इन ऑर्डर टू अचीव योर ड्रीम ऑफ बिकमिंग अ डॉक्टर एंड दैट ड्रीम इज अचीव बाय वेरी वेरी फ्यू पीपल इन इंडिया एंड यू वुड बी वेरी लकी टू अचीव दैट ड्रीम्स अनलेस सर यू डोंट डू द प्रॉपर तपस्या यू नॉट गोइंग टू गेट वॉट यू वॉन्ट सो इमेजिन दिस टू बी योर अग्निपथ योर तपस्या योर डिफिकल्ट पाथ विच यू हैव टू गेट थ्रू एंड इट्स गोइंग टू सक समाइम्स इट्स गोइंग टू बी हार्ड समटाइम्स एंड इट्स गोइंग टू बी वेरी वेरी हार्श विद रिस्पेक्ट टू योर लाइफ एंड हॉबीज बट इट्स गोइंग टू बी वर्थ इट वैन यू क्रैक दैट एग्जामिनेशन यू क्रैक नीट and when you enter your dream medical college anyways i really hope that you enjoyed this video use the first thing in the description to get the oswal's previous year question paper books they are literally amazing the best pyqs on the entire planet earth i would say and come back to this video and let this video be your accountability buddy whenever you are feeling sad or lonely or whenever you have done a great job or even when you haven't anyways this is dr nosh pachel signing off take care i'll see you on sunday 10 am goodbye